The Triple M Grill Team. <laughs> Turn Gus, MG and Matty on 6 till 9 weekdays. Boys, an Aussie reporter who spent years in Iraq working for Time Mag and CNN, Michael Ware. He came close to death when he was held at gunpoint by a group uh, very close to Al-Qaeda. We spoke to him when uh, Bin Laden was killed a couple of years ago, That's and he's right. in Brisbane now. Michael, thanks for joining us again on The Grill Team. Lads, good good to hear from you. We really must stop meeting like this. Every time we talk, it's about Al-Qaeda and Jihad. It's all, yeah. Yeah. Doom, about it. doom and gloom. Exactly right, mate. Now, t- tell us what's happening at the moment. People are talking about Iraq again. There's, there's things happening all the time. Oh, absolutely. Look, you know, the Al-Qaeda organisation that began in Iraq when the, the US and the Aussies and everyone else invaded hasn't gone away. Quite the opposite. It's become bigger and bolder than you can imagine. It now spans two countries. What started in Iraq is now running a civil war in Syria. And over the last week, these guys have essentially reinvaded Iraq on their own, sweeping in, taking city after city, pushing the government and the army forces back to the point now where the government is trying to defend the capital, Baghdad. It is absolutely extraordinary. It's breathtaking. Michael, it, it's quite incredible. We're starting to see the consequences of the Arab Spring, and, we're, and when we remove a benevolent dictator such as Saddam Hussein, it leaves a vacuum of power, particularly when we withdrew in Iraq. And it seems like these, these guys, ISIS, uh, the Islamic State of uh, Iraq and, uh, and Syria, are really going in. And from what we understand, Al-Qaeda even distanced themselves from them. They're so, they're so hardcore. Oh, look, mate, it's hard to describe to you how menacing this outfit is. Like I said, they began in Iraq. I was there during their birth when their first leader rose up and pulled them together. Very soon, they became a part of Al-Qaeda, but not for the, for the last time. Al-Qaeda told these guys to calm it down that they were too brutal, that they were too mongrel. And these guys defied al-Qaeda. They defied Osama and carried on. Now, we've seen that happen again in the last year. These guys continued fighting greater than before in Syria to the point where al-Qaeda had to say one more time, cut it out, dial down the violence, the beheadings, the slaughter. And for the second time, they defied al-Qaeda. Uh, this is the only outfit in the world that scares Al-Qaeda. Now, that tells you something. Michael, where do they find these fighters? I mean, where, where, where do, what sort of human beings get recruited to just go into villages and slay Christians and, uh, and Shiite Muslims and, and, and just do it with gay abandon? Look, there's, there's long historical reasons for this. Some of them very old, these historical reasons, some of them much newer. I mean, there is, there is a, a boiling animosity that exists in some quarters in the, in the Muslim world between, as you say, Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims. Essentially, that's like Catholics and Protestants. Mm. And there's lots of, lots of old wounds there. And this is a group that is capitalizing on those wounds and inflaming them. But also, there's, there's Iraqis who, who see themselves as victims of the American invasion and occupation, and they've got fresh wounds. But even, even more concerning is the unending stream of new recruits, guys from Australia, from Europe, from America, from all parts of the world, from Asia, from Russia, who are gravitating to this group. They find them on Twitter and they find them on Facebook. These guys are getting fired up in their mosques back at home and decide, that's it, I'm going to jihad, and they volunteer. And most of their foot soldiers who are in the tanks and manning the heavy weapons and doing the fighting, most of these guys are Iraqis and Syrians. But nice telling of all, the majority of the suicide bombers are these foreign volunteers. They travel across the world to go and die in the name of fanatical Islam. Okay, Michael, I've just given you a, uh, a bit of a promotion. You are now head of the free world. What's the, quick, what's the quickest answer to stopping the carnage? Oh, mate, there's it's, it's no easy fix to this one, I've got to tell you. I mean, we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. The last time that Al-Qa- this group became strong and they owned their own little mini country in Iraq, the only thing that stopped them was themselves. They went just too far. The slaughter in the streets, the beheadings en masse went so far that eventually the locals turned on them. It's the only thing that stopped them. 
And now they have the support of the locals again because the Iraqi government is playing one side of the fence and not the other, rounding up Sunnis and disappearing them and killing them and imprisoning them. So they've got momentum. And no jets that we can send over there and bomb them is going to stop them, I've got to tell you that. Yeah. So it's going to take something extraordinary to, uh, to blunt these guys this time. Wow. Seems like the war on ter- terror is one that will never end, Michael. Mate, I'm looking forward to seeing this uh, doco you're finalising uh, with your company, Penance Films, about your experiences with Al-Qaeda. Of course, you were held at gunpoint by uh, a group sympathetic to Al-Qaeda. I was, I was kidnapped by this group. The one that we're talking about. Wow, wow. Really? That's what we're talking about. I filmed it as they're dragging me from the car, um, and that's going into my movie. My movie is about the weird, weird circumstance of history where I, my relationship with the founder of this very group that we're talking about, how he chose me and how that almost cost me my life many, many times. Can't well, wait Michael, that. cannot wait to see it, mate. And of course, we'll have you on when it's closer to uh, coming out so we can talk about it a little bit more. Thanks for being so candid with us. And uh, there's no better man on this, uh, no better authority on this particular subject. Michael Ware, thanks a lot for your time on The Grill Team this morning. Guys, thanks very much. And not to inflame further the holy war, can I say, go Maroons, Queensland by two. <laughs> you, you, That's you, it. You're That's an idiot, it, Michael. <laughs> you bastards. Stay your own way. The Grill Team. Gus. MG. And Maddie Johns. Triple M Breakfast.